Hello and welcome back to some more of the uh, Teutonic Order Iron Man Let's Play. We are going for the Baltic Crusader achievement and we are of course in Europe Universals 4. And you're here with me, the Green Dragon. The last episode we just finished starting to next Novgorod. I mean that technically may be disloyal, but... I mean, they did dip below the 50% uh, mark, so they should be loyal come, uh, come the uh, next uh, month. So that's good. And rivals. It's Poland or Lithuania. Uh, I will be taking more land from Lithuania, I think, for my Livonian brethren. So, that being the case, we are gonna go for that. Provincial unrest. Garten and Riga. Okay, Polotsky and, and Regan Separatists. You are court too. Okay. Shit, son. Okay, which one of them is bigger, Riga or this fucker? This fucker. So I'm gonna park my army on there to hopefully slow down the rebellion on that account. 432. Sweet. That's not a bad. Uh, leader there, actually. Uh, once the war exhaustion wears off, the Rigan guy should completely chillax. And these guys should be almost completely chill as well. Um, since we are out of the war, I'm gonna mothball my forts, cause frankly I need the cash. I did borrow to... Uh, Seriously up the uh, trade power I have in the Baltic node for great glory and justice Sweden accepted peace with their former enemies Norway So uh, Norway is almost gone then What are your friends just Denmark Norway Poland Utrecht um, I like this idea. I'm gonna fabricate on them. And possibly vassalize them after my, uh, or just take some of their lands. But I think Norway I'll vassalize. And take some lands from the uh, Denmarkians in order to maintain the balance of power with my uh, vassals. We're gonna make Shetland the war goal because I should have naval superiority versus Denmark and Norway and that should allow me to easily take and keep the war goal. The dream there is simple. Take some land. Since I once again have admin points. And I think I might just... Okay, who are my rivals? Sweden, who are your friends? Scotland, Tver, Hansa. I mean, I'm nowhere near full strength. And this is crazy. But if I could do some shit there, that would certainly go a long ways. I'm considering ditching the uh, fort in Riga because the Livonians sort of keep up the line with Raval and that. But I'm not gonna be doing that just yet because, well... I'll risk uh, keeping that going rather than, you know. And I do want to colonize and my first idea will be exploration, so I'm switching my focus to uh, diplomatic. I, I'm already uh, way good on military tech and I'm gonna be able to stay ahead relatively easily, so that isn't really a problem. England is gonna ball out of control here. Possibly. Maybe. Well, France has recovered or expanded some of their land, so maybe they're not out of it yet, but I don't know. England has a lot of French territory these days. And the Pope, how close is he to an alliance? He would just take it. He has some... Uh, that's Siena, right? Right. The Pope, are you at war now? Military, armies, the uh, Papal State. Because that... 
the 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 papal state eight thousand with a force limit of sixteen. Um, I think my current allies are worth more, and I don't have an extra slot, so I'm gonna. We're gonna be ignoring that possibility, but of course we don't get royal marriages, so our um, any efforts we make to actually make this a thing are relatively easy because we can break alliances without much problem. Yeah, they're just allied to Denmark, which isn't too bad. Um, this time though, I will actually wait for the um, war exhaustion to fully tick down before engaging with Norway. Because we do need to relax a smidgen. I mean, we've... We've survived the start of the game, right? Novgorod is ours, Livonia is ours, that's vast territories that is... That are under our control, we are good. We even took a lot, a lot of development off of uh, Lithuania as well, which is... Like, another 50% off the top, on the top of what we started with, I think. We have, we start with something like 120 and we took like 60 there, so... Something like that. Of course it's, uh, well, autonomous to all fuck, but eventually, right? Eventually that is gonna be a thing and we're gonna be able to do things there. This will be finished in 21 years, cause my Diplo rep and stuff sucks. Well, that is unfortunate then. In the meantime, I want to take some land. Lose prestige, gain points. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll take that deal. You are still ahead of time, right? Yes, you are. I think I want to save up enough points to actually get my first idea group. Because I do want to start taking exploration. I mean, I need Diplotech 7 for that to be a thing, but still. And how bad is our uh, aggressive expansion? With Sweden, not too bad. Okay. Heat map. 24, 26, 18. Scotland, England don't care. Lithuania and Muscovy want me to die in a fire, the both of them. Poland too, a little bit. Yeah. Much as I might want to, we are not just not ready for another war. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We uh, go through our guys pretty quickly, because they start pretty old. Because we are a brotherhood of uh, Christian knights and or some such shit. Pomerania declared on Brandenburg. Shit. Who are your friends, Lithuania? Because, fun fact... Recover Samogithia. That's here, right? Poland, Bohemia, Pomerania, Tver... Shit, that's not exactly great. That's not exactly great. I could feed Gotland to Livonia. <laughs> If they manage to take it, but again, I can't really take all that much either, can I? Because someone's gonna be butt hurt about this. Then again, I do need to kill Sweden. And returning course is a damn good way to do that. Right, right. Next year, next year we're gonna get some cannons. I certainly don't want to fight without cannons, and that would be just uh, that would be just sad. So these are done. That should be ensuring us a bigger piece of the pie, right? Two guys flowing into there. Hmm. Okay. We don't really control much in the uh, that now, do we? Okay. What about Poland? Denmark, Lithuania, and Würzburg. 
I could fight Poland without fighting, yay. Okay, important question, do I have a freaking CB here? Alright, my friends wouldn't help with that war, so it would have to be like this, because I just can't afford to go in, in any other way. Still have chances of uprisings. I would like for those to dig down before. Oh, the Polotskin guys are gonna. Okay. Okay, that happened. The Palatin is Emperor. We are now dealing with a weak Emperor that's still out with Austria. Shit. Still, this does make it more likely that we'll be able to actually go after something like Pomerania here. And I'm gonna put this fort on because we might have a rebellion there. Like any month now we could have one. Okay, manpower is slowly recovering but obviously we don't have as much of it as we would like. Yeah, getting that first idea group going so we can actually start exploring would be good. That, I think, is, um, yeah. It's definitely a thing we'll be doing first. Because scoring shit is all na- You know, it's good and all, and clay is awesome. But you know. Poland, Bohemia, Pomerania, and Tver, of all things. Jesus. They have so many freaking allies. But they have a mission to come after me, so they might just declare on me themselves, and... That would be good. Meanwhile, you. Let's do this. I need to uh, rethink my military a bit, because I am spending a lot of money on mercenaries, and I would need to... It would be good if I could balance my budget a bit. That being a case, uh, sure. We'll ditch that. Which one of these two do we need? Because I can't keep both and I can afford to maintain myself with just one. So, sure, that leaves Danzig vulnerable, but it also saves us valuable cash money. And then there's the mercenaries, of course. Okay. We have... A metric factor of them. I'm gonna start hiring normal infantry here. Ever so slowly and deleting them. I'm gonna train them up first and then delete the mercenaries because I frankly don't want my vassals to get any ideas. I don't want integration to stall out for whatever reason. To admittedly it seems fine right now. Let's see, this, this may well put it over the 50% mark. Suppose we'll see. Yeah, that's a long time to integrate it. Just scoring things is so much faster if you have the bloody points, which I don't, admittedly, but you know. And I will want a cavalry to go with that, because we only have the one right now. And our income is already much better. Excellent. We're gonna try and make a proper army. We'll even put, uh, say, three or four cannons in there. Almost at the idea group. At uh, level two we can start actually exploring things. At level three I think we get extended range. Colonial range, yes. So that plus tech seven should be enough to allow us to actually start colonizing. And then... Actually, in order for that to be a thing, uh, we need to have good relations with the Pope. Why? Because there's this mechanic which allows us to claim an entire colonial region, which forces the other Catholics to stay out, I think, in a game, and you know. That could be good. I do want the no pirates in my Caribbean, if I can manage it, and the uh, five colonies thing. 
Because you know, those are some nice, nice uh, achievements and I'd like them very much. We are a bit in debt because we use that to build our marketplaces in the hopes that the uh, profits would improve and I suppose eventually they will, it's just gonna take a bit of time. There's the tech. Yeah, and we really need Diplo stuff to get up through the tech and get our idea going because, you know, reasons. Relation, reputation, it's tempting. Uh, yes, I suppose influence would be good too eventually, but I'm going for more than just the one achievement and it should be just, it should be fine cutting through Muscovy and, well, everything here, and frankly, well, frankly, we, um, do have Siberia to colonize as well. I don't know how much of the Siberian part is something we need to, uh, worry about for the achievement, but it would certainly be nice, and I want to be ready just in case, and God damn it, there's so much wealth there that I want it, ultimately. So yeah, we're gonna go for it. <clears> okay, <throat> yeah, I do need to keep my maintenance at full there, cause uh, rebels could rise up and seek freaking, freaking independence there. It might not fire. You might be able to prevent it entirely. It's possible. We're gonna do the ideas here first, up to three. And this will make our trap cost less as well, which is good. And then after we've done that, we will switch over to doing tech, I think. But getting a few ideas will certainly bring the cost down, and more people getting ahead of us, again, brings the costs down and makes this uh, significantly easier for us, obviously. Time for another infantry. Well, that's a long recruitment time. Can't claim born home of all places. I think that's what we declared at one point over, I can't recall. Yeah, that's when we took Nodgeland. Yeah. That's definitely a thing. Yeah, this is gonna happily take down, and yeah, obviously there's not that much to talk about, because we're mostly just waiting for things to chillax. We have slightly less troops than our vassals as a group, but they don't seem to be too butthurt about it. Yeah, the march helps with that. And the 100 total development or more, of course, hurts that even further, but oh well. We do get extra monthly aut autonomy takedowns due to uh, our government form, but at the same time, kind of tempted to uh, look in... Well, we can't really change our thing, can we? So, unrest reduction of all kinds is good. We do get infantry combat ability. I'm thinking at level 7 I will go for quality because it involves discipline, which is damn good. and. Infantry combat ability, which is damn good. And yearly army tradition. Army tradition is so hard to get and keep up in this game now. It's insane. Anything that adds to that is... It helps a lot. We are gonna keep our army at 12k until we get rid of our mercenaries completely. Because, you know... Maybe I should have gone for deploy headline. No. I'm an idiot. I thought it would, be, would put me in the negatives, because annexation certainly can, but uh, I don't think events can take you in the negatives, so I should have gone for that. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Well, fuck me, I suppose. 
Yeah, I need a lot more cash to uh, get out of this funk. Uh, national unrest guy, kind of. The land force limit guy. I think I can kick him safely. Because, frankly, I don't need more force limit. It's not force limit that's the problem. Yeah, that brings us up to four. We have uh, debts to repay and we do have a smidgen of inflation. Not a lot, but just a little bit. Of course, once we get Novgorod, a lot of the wealth from the Novgorod node is gonna flow onwards instead of staying there as you as it currently is, as you can see. I intend to feed Polotsk, Vitebsk, Smolensk, Kaluga, Moskva, Rzhev, Pskov and Ostrov to the Livonian order. And then I'm gonna, once I go to war with Muscovy and Lithuania one more time, I'm gonna revoke their March status. Let that start ticking down at that point. You know, I should be strong enough that I won't need the extra strength from them being March and I'll be able to control them and then I'll, well, let's say one more war with Lithuania. I take these three and then I revoke their March status. I I think that should be okay. I kind of need to keep them under control by any... This was actually starting to tick down, wasn't it? And then that's the buildy bullshit. Okay. Riga has chilled the fuck out. That's excellent. Minus 1.6. Yeah, there's no way I can convert that, s that currently, but uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Oh, uh, yeah, go ahead and recruit that for me, I think. Manpower 140 per. Oh, come on, that's so ridiculously crappy. Uh, why don't we take a look at this? Okay, that's still running on increased autonomy. Okay. You know, sometimes it might be better to just decrease autonomy and take the uh, hit. There, get the recent uprising bonus. Provided I had the manpower to do bullshit like that. I'm curious, are you at war and are you hurt and do you have any good friends? Uh, Muscovy. 19,000. I could take him. Yeah! I could take him. I think we still have a truce though. 87. Oh yeah, we definitely have a truce. We we took a lot of land back for our Novgorodian guys, so they're gonna be a bit butthurt about that. Yeah, it's plus one here because we don't get legitimacy bonuses due to being a freaking holy order. I think I need to go to war with someone who's an enemy. Scotland, Tver and the Huns and they're at war with England as well. Yeah, we need to keep the Pope happy with us for future days, but let's see who... Seriously. They would accept friendship with me because they... Seriously? The Hansa and Scotland wouldn't join, it would be just me versus them, and they do have a core. Hmm. Sweden. Sweden. Ah, uh, 19,000 troops. 8,000 in reserve, 3 mercenaries. How far into your bullshit are you? Just the infantry combat ability, not that that isn't enough. Me and my two vassals... I don't think we're in the position where we can be uh, fighting the uh, Swedes all that well, unfortunately. We're still building back up after our adventures. That's five of them. Okay, good to know. And um, I'm gonna end the video here. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Bit of a peaceful episode, I suppose. But what can you do? I need to recover at some point from all the wars I've been waging. So, um, 
I'll see you guys in the next one.